Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the part 11. Here we are looking at app flow. Buddy, not air flow. Is it app flow? So please hit subscribe button to get alert. Now let us quickly jump. What is air flow? App flow. See, whenever you see in your certifications, the question says that it has to integrate with it means AWS has to integrate with SaaS that is software as a service at that time we use air app flow i'm just confusing between airflow and app flow so you have app flow deployed here you have all the saas like slack salesforce and so on and then you can what you can do here is once your data is coming in you can mask the fields you can map the fields your usual etl you can filter the data maybe you may not require for example you have five departments and you are only looking to move the finance data or the sales data so you will filter the sales data and only send those here from a certification standpoint you should know this right hand side where you can put the data in amazon you can put it on s3 redshift snowflake Salesforce. Now you might say, hey, you know what? Snowflake is not a part of AWS. So a lot of Snowflake implementations is customized to work on AWS. So you can also put it on Snowflake databases. You can apply formulas. You can validate the data. You can map the fields, merge the fields, any ETL processing, man, any ETL using Glue. So what the hell is AppFlow, man? AppFlow is a fully managed integration service. So it is like, you know, there are websites like Shadi.com, which will help you link to the girl or the right guy. So this is AppFlow is similar to that. This is the guy and this is a girl and AppFlow will help you integrate these two. Integrate means help you meet or consider this as a Tinder, which allows two different set of applications to integrate or talk to each other. By the way, Tinder is not good for your social health or psychological health because it helps you get addicted to meeting new people every now and then. Okay, so let's look here. What is software as a service? That means, for example, Salesforce. They have Salesforce data. It is available as a software as a service. That means you, you, you do not have to install anything on AWS. Salesforce will not be on AWS. Salesforce will be on Sales Cloud. There are Sales Cloud pods. What are those different SaaS? Apart from Salesforce, you have SAP, Zendesk, Slack. Now you know Slack is a Salesforce product, Salesforce acquired Slack and ServiceNow. These are the products which are supported in a SaaS model. So basically, take this example. You have Salesforce here, you have S3 here. It integrates well, talk to each other, and it is bi directional. The girl talks to boy, the boy talks to girl. It is both the ways. Tinder works both the ways. The boy can talk to the girl, the girl can also search for a boy. Now, what is the advantage of app flow? So many people might ask, hey, you know what? There are already public APIs available in the open source market. Why you need app flow? Why will I pay for it? See, if you like coding, you if your client has a lot of time to code, go for public APIs, man. Go for it. Live your dream. Become the coder. Waste your time. Reinvent the wheel again. But if you are smart and don't want to reinvent the wheel, use app flow. Now, there always will be some things which is probably not possible through app flow. If you have such customized complex requirements, write a code for it. Now, let us understand the trigger mechanisms. Very important from a certification standpoint, trigger mechanisms you can do on demand. That means whenever you want, if you have rented a car from Hertz, the car is in your disposal whenever you want whenever you want on demand you can use the car you can do it event based for example you are going for a wedding invitation you have a wedding invitation and you're going there and you want to show off you know you want to show off a lot of people they are of that category so usually they will drive a honda but during those events they will hire a bmw so that is event based okay so afro will work on event based as well based on for example the status change of support tickets or a completion of registration form you have certain data to be moved you can do that and it can be scheduled as well like you have a particular time where the data will be synced like when you were a child or a kid you had a tuition sir he used to come at a scheduled time 
now you might ask what about the tuition ma'am okay i didn't i never had a tuition ma'am man i was not so fortunate i know some of my colleagues they had a young uh, ma'am but i was not so fortunate so jokes apart what are the supported saas integration platforms like i already told you important from the certification standpoint s3 salesforce sap marketo zendas slack okay you can integrate these now what happens is you might say hey just these four and five saas product what if i want to integrate with other saas products so if you want it if you want money from your father ask your father here if you want it you ask aws they will be more than willing to create something customized for you but you have to pay for it obviously nothing is free of cost and the best part is you don't need a private link so this might come in the certification and they may give examples that you know i we don't have private links and that's why we are not able to use airflow crap you can still use it you don't need a private link for it now some people might ask hey you know what to move the data i have data sync what is the difference see the main difference is data sync is used for one time high volume transfer so this is very important from a data analytics sap that is solution architect professional c01 c02 and solution architect associate c03 remember data sync what is the difference data sync you use for one time high volume move you have like 100 terabyte of data or you have 10 terabyte of data you use data sync to move it but appflow is specially designed for saas integration so whenever you see questions in your uh, exam where you see saas integrations then you should go for appflow which is the thumb rule you should remember now can i deploy appflow using cloud formation you know cloud formation what is cloud formation cloud formation you can use this for writing infrastructure as a code you just have small piece of code you run it and your infrastructure is created that is the advantage of using uh this cloud formation okay so go ready use this cloud formation but you can only use it in some regions some regions obviously which region where you have white dominated population to start with why why see this is my perspective i may be totally wrong and uh, i have nothing to do with alienating a certain set of population but what i have seen is a lot of opportunities a lot of these systems are built in countries uh, where you know probably these are developed countries and then it comes to the developing countries so same happens with lot of services now if you have to receive a history of app flow calls api calls you can use cloud trail using management console that is possible remember this for the certification you can use cloud trail for this purpose now security is of prime importance this guy here gentleman here this is a security guy so similar to you know normally offices and buildings you have security guards there similar to that you should have iam and policies being leveraged so that desired set of permissions can be set for example for example uh, sales only sales team can access the sales data from coming from salesforce and you should not give that access to hr team or it team and so on that is how you will use iam policies now when we come to security encryption is a key element you can do end to end encryption using what kms that is key management system from aws the keys can be used to encrypt and decrypt the data the keys can be used to encrypt and decrypt the data this is the thumb rule man every time remember that encryption always happens using keys they can be customer generated they can be aws generated encryption can be addressed can be in transit that means while the data moves from here till here it is in transit the encryption happens how how always remember man always remember this should be by heart tls protocol 1.2 tls protocol at rest at the database level at s3 level you can still encrypt it okay using what but use keys use kms use customer managed keys whatever to summarize security please pause this video read this carefully i have already explained this see now we have established app flow is purely secure you can create policies iam leverage leveraging can be done and encryption is possible both at rest in transit now can it scale up today you have 50000 rows to be moved immediately in 4 hours you get like 500k rows will it work it scales up any service if you see in aws they built the scaling by default so now many people say hey it scales up what about scale down 
you will get everything man in aws everything is possible so you were operating with 500k rows now it goes down to 20k rows it will scale down so that you why, why do you scale down so that you don't have to pay the money for example it just imagine you have a five bedroom apartment you keep the fan and lights on even if you are staying in just one bedroom will it make sense no then you have to scale down what is the scale down that means the lights and the fans will be switched off for the other bedrooms so now we have established it has massive scaling capabilities please pause this read it carefully there will be questions on this topic now let's look at some other topics like error logging you know what what sort of errors you can log variety of errors like connection failure database is down application is down then connection retries always remember what happens is, you know when this guy this guy here is trying to approach this girl here through tinder this is tinder what happens is there has to be many retries because why because usually you will see the female population they will have a lot of demand so what happens they are not desperate for you you are desperate for them in india man this is a scene in america as well <laughs> that's why america is the country producing maximum in cells if you don't know the word in cell google it so what happens is this guy has to do multiple retries multiple retries hey would you like to have a coffee hey would you like to get around for a beer that is called connection retries the connection fails again it will retry so that you know the data can be moved just like i explained earlier you can map for example salesforce fields you are mapping to some database here redshift you can create mappings okay above all you can mask the data what do you in the tinder world what is masking you are faking it right your name is reshma but you fake it you say your name is katherine and vice versa okay so that is called masking so that your personal identifier information is not available easily so here also you can mask for example salesforce has some data sets for customer names or sales rep representatives and so on you can mask those data when it moves from salesforce to aws in the tinder world you know a lot of time people ask hey what do you do which office do you work and you want to filter them out you don't want to let them know that is also possible so here as well you can filter the data you can just take what you want to be communicated what you want to be sent we have now established what is appflow possible i mean uh, it's possible of doing so please pause this video read this carefully i have already explained this now let us quickly try to understand what are the use cases where appflow can be used you can use for data enrichment in the tinder world you may not be serious but you are using this platform for experience enrichment similarly here we do data enrichment so many companies can use this to enrich the data the data comes from salesforce you get it in aws then you put it in sagemaker so that you can derive a lot of analytics and insights advanced analytics out of it so if the data can you might think in salesforce the data was not useful but by the time it comes to sagemaker and you produce some insights you think oh this is the insight that i get from this data now you can create uh, automated data backups in the salesforce world if you have saas platforms you want to take some backups and etc instead of using salesforce pods cloud pods there you can move it to s3 s3 why s3 why s3 man this is the cheapest this is the cheapest to store your data so you can do that and you know there is a software called slack it is used for, to communicate within the organization and so on so there may be a lot of companies using slack for internal communications now there can be slack events you can take these events to redshift and plug a bi tool on top of it and derive some very meaningful insights so this is also a use case very useful in the industry so let me show you some examples where you can easily use this and the questions will be based around these examples so please have a note of this carefully my friend carefully push your records from a csv file into s3 into a salesforce account contact or lead object so if you don't know salesforce uh, there are objects called contact and lead objects and you can you know use your data to to be pushed to salesforce this is one example now what if you are using sap hana or sap erp so you can 
hydrate the S3 data lake. Suppose you have a data lake which is populated from SAP, so you do not have to put everything into SAP platform. Okay, you can have multiple technologies, move the data lake to S3, make a data lake in S3, and let SAP feed it, let other systems like Oracle and so on feed it. So your data lake is hydrated on S3. Now you can send tickets from Zendesk. This is a ticketing tool, and you can send it to Redshift. And as usual, you can plug a BI tool for reporting. What will you create from a ticketing report? What sort of reports you will create? Like, what is the usual turnaround time? If, if these are priority one and two tickets, did we fail any SLAs? Are we adhering to the SLAs? How many times we deviated from the SLAs? So on. Now we spoke about that we will take the data from Salesforce to S3 and what will we do? We will do some advanced analytics. After that, we will find like examples like lead scores and account churn risk scores and we will send it back to Salesforce. Okay, so that's why we told this is bi-directional. You see this arrow? It has, it is bi-directional. Data can move from here to here. Data can move from AWS to Salesforce also. Please hit the subscribe and the like button. Stay tuned to get some more updates around new technologies. This brings us to the end of part 11. See you in the next part.